So what's going on guys, Kades here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the new overpowered Infinimist Necromancer build in Diablo 4. So at the start I will explain how to play this class. Then we will look into the best skills, paragon setup, what gems and cage hearts are the best and most optimized. And then lastly I will show you what exact gear should you farm and use. So you would get the highest damage possible and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So the Infinimist Necromancer build is best of both worlds, because it combines the highest survivability rates, massive AoE shadow damage and even critical strike burst damage. This build and playstyle excels at high nightmare dungeon pushing, speed farming and leveling. Like most necro players, all that we will need to do is spam the corpse explosion and rely on mediocre lucky hit procs for crowd control by leveling. But then if you use this build in the endgame, then unlike other builds, the Infinimist Necro will prioritize lucky hit stats to stack over 50%, and by using the Decrepify ability, this will allow us to almost immediately refresh all of our cooldowns, and have infinite amount of blood mist with no cooldown whatsoever. So if you are interested in this build in depth, then keep watching the guide, and you can even copy the exact details by checking the description, where you can see this link on a build website. Overall this build guide is split into two parts. The first part is a leveling build, so what you want to use to go from level 1 to 50. And then the second part is the full endgame build, which will require at least level 50. So with that said, let's move over to the leveling build. To start off from getting to level 3, we have to put 2 points into these 2 nodes. Then from level 4 to 7, we spend 4 more points in here. Then from level 8 to 15, we will get 8 more points, which we want to use by getting all of these nodes. Then from level 16 to 28 we will get 12 points, which we should spend by unlocking and upgrading all of these nodes. Then from level 29 to 35 you will get 6 more points. And then lastly from level 32 to 49 we will get 17 skill points, which we should spend on these specific nodes. And by the way if I went too fast then you are feel free to check out this video's description where you can see this build on a website. And then finally don't forget about your renown which after you gather all the renown in the game, you will get 10 extra skill points. I recommend to spend them towards your leveling progression, which I just explained a second ago. And then in the endgame build, I will show you where you want to spend your 10 leftover skill points. Then let's move over to the necromancer special class bonus, called the Book of the Dead. The Book of the Dead will give us access to raise skeletons and golems, which will give us the ability to summon many hordes of undead minions to fight by our side. So for the leveling build we want to go into the Skeletal Warriors Reapers and select the second upgrade. Then in Skeletal Mages Cold we select the first upgrade. And then lastly in the Golem's Bone we select the third upgrade. Then as far as gear goes, leveling up in Diablo 4 is similar to most other MMOs. So for the most part this will mean that you have to constantly replace one rare item with a better one, all the way up to level 50. Generally for leveling you want to have a 200 sword since they will give us implicit critical strike damage. And for the weapon stats, you want to preferably get a core skill damage, overpowered damage or damage to close enemies. Then as for your clothes, the armor pieces typically grant us defensive and utility stats, except gloves which will offer us offense. So for your helmet, try to get intelligence, maximum life, resistance and cooldown reduction. Then for chest armor, get maximum life, total armor and damage reduction. Then for gloves, get blood surge ranks, attack speed, damage and intelligence. Then for pants, get corpse explosion ranks, maximum life, intelligence and damage reduction. Then for boots, get movement speed, corpse tendril ranks and fortified generation. Then for your jewelry, specifically for your amulet, get the imperfectly balanced ranks, blood ranks, essence cost reduction and movement speed. And then finally for both of your rings, get damage, damage to close enemies, damage to cc enemies, overpowered damage and vulnerable damage. And don't forget to not upgrade armor or jewelry while leveling. Only socket armor with rubies, jewelry with skulls, weapons with rubies as well, and save the rest of your upgrades for your level 50 build. Then as far as leveling gameplay loop goes, I don't want to go super in depth as skills and abilities will change after you get to level 50. But overall for your leveling build, I recommend to just enjoy each skill and get used to the necromancer gameplay. So then at the start of the fight, our main goal is to get few mob kills with our small but quick damage abilities. 
so then we can use our corpse tendrils and corpse explosion to do massive amounts of damage 24 7. So we have the hemorrhage and blood surge, which are main two starter skills, which we want to use to get few corpses on the ground by doing quick damage. Then from here we spam the corpse explosion and corpse tendrils and they will do massive amounts of AOE and CC damage. Then afterwards we have our blood mist, which will make us immune to almost every single effect in the game. So use it if you ever get in trouble, or if you are just in between massive mob group. And then lastly we have the Ray Skeletal skill, which is a must have skill on our skill bar. So we could summon our skeletal army, and we can summon a skeletal by just simply targeting and consuming a corpse, and it's that simple. This build is very simple and straightforward and it will do massive amounts of damage without even trying. So now let's move over to the second part where I will show you your endgame necromancer build and how it will look like. So by this point you should be familiar with the Infinimist playstyle, then what gear stats you should look out for and etc. So as I did the most explaining at the start, so right now I will just show you the best setup that you wanna use, and I personally tested multiple setups and this one was the best one. So first of all for your skills we wanna use the Reap, the Creepify, Corpse Explosion, Corpse Tendrils, Bone Storm and Blood Mist. And for your Book of the Dead, like we discussed in the leveling build, get this time the Skeletal Warriors Reapers, the third sacrifice upgrade. Then the second one called the Skeletal Mages Cold, get the third sacrifice upgrade. And then finally for the last one, go into the Golem's Iron and select again the third sacrifice upgrade. As for your gear we already looked into the stats, but if you're purely looking for the best armor pieces then here they are. So we want to get the Coven's Hell of Disobedience. Then for your chest armor get the Coven's Rainment of Explosive Mist. Then for gloves get the Hell from the below. Then for pants go with the Coven's Chuck of Shielding Storm. Then for boots get the Ghostwalker's for Lined Boots. Then for the amulet equip the Blighted Amulet. Then for the first ring get the Ring of Decay. And then for the second one get the Ring of the Ultimate Shadow. Then for your weapon get the Apprentice Wand of the Grasping Vein. And for your offhand get the Blood Soaked Focus. Then for your gems, socket all weapons with the Amethyst and armor pieces with Topaz. Then for the first heart, get the Cage Heart of the Barber, because this will allow your dot damage to effectively critical strike the enemy by transforming it into a new damage source, which then applies in an AoE, which in result will drastically increase our overall clearing speed. Then for the second one, get the Cage Heart of the Decrepit Aura. This heart will maintain permanently our Decrify Aura, which will apply to monsters within a close range, without needing us even to use the skill itself. And then lastly we want to get the Cage Heart of the Sacrilegious, because this will proc corpse tendrils once every 6 seconds on the closed corpses, without using our cooldown. It will also cast Corpse Explosion for the extra damage, so all in all this is a great heart for our massive damage build. Then with that said moving forwards, and this is how your skill tree will look like. If you just came from the leveling build then this is a bit more different but the core principles still are the same. So again just copy these exact upgrades in no particular order. And by the way don't forget to check this video's description to see this build on a website. And again remember that by gathering all the renown in the game you will get 10 extra skill points. And then finally we have the paragon system. So starting off this is how your first 30 points should be spent. So we use the starting board and for the glyph select territorial. Then this is how it will look like at around 91 points. So we get the wither board and for the glyph select darkness. Then this is how it will look like at around 133 points. So this time we select the flesh eater board and go with the scorch glyph. Then afterwards at around 178 points you want to select the scent of the dead board and equip the control glyph. Then for one of the last ones, at around 194 points, we want to get the blood bad board and select the exploit glyph. And then lastly, this is our final goal at around 225 points. So we just want to add a few of these last nodes and that's about it. So with that said, let's take a closer look at each skill and the gameplay loop. So at the start of the fight, make sure you use the decrypify skill so you would not miss any CD reduction procs. Then follow that up with the blood mist. And this will generate corpses and apply shadow damage to our stacks. Then from now we use the corpse tendrils to push all enemies into a single small area. And now we want to spam in between our skills the corpse explosion. And refresh the decrepify every few seconds. Then as well if we are fighting stronger enemies, 
We can even include the Bone Storm or Reap to get even more shadow damage procs and to keep up a steady stream of dead corpses on the ground. Our main goal with this build is to keep reapplying most of our skills, to keep reapplying stacks and because of our 50% luck and CC control, we will be able to easily kill all of our enemies with refreshing most of our skills back on zero cooldown. So keep on spamming the infinite blood mist and corpse explosion and have fun. So then in my final summary, the Infinimist Necromancer build is similar to Bone Spear build in just pure damage numbers, but it does do better things than most Necro builds, which are surviving and moving fast. So then now it is obvious that in this new season, this build is the best one to use for farming and potentially to clear a tier 100 nightmare dungeon. Overall, this build for sure is one of the best for speed farming, but it can also push nightmare dungeons very easily. So what are you waiting for? Try this build out and have fun.